All right, so I'm currently on the phone with the Mosquito from Sunset Drip. I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hey, what is up, everybody? I am the Mosquito from the Sunset Drip, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Alex. Of course, of course. Thanks for joining me. Uh, so with these interviews, I always kind of like get like to get into the nitty gritty of it and you know find out some details about how you first got into music what about it did you find inspiring and made you want to pursue it to be honest um i fell into music as a uh, as a wonderful coping mechanism for being young and angsty when i was 15 16 years old going to gigs uh, I went to a festival, uh, Rancid, actually, in Rise Against, and it completely blew my mind, and I knew that that's where I wanted to be. So uh, I started my first band back then in high school when I was 16 and wrote that out for eight years. We were called The Barrel Heads. And then when that came to an end, uh, it was only a six-month period uh, until Sunset Drip got started. Uh, but going to shows over the years and spending time in the nightlife and learning how to do write and express myself through that medium i think was a healthy out, out, outlet for me okay so do you focus ma mainly on uh vocals and lyrics or what is your overall contribution to your projects uh well for sunset drip uh i'm doing vocals i'm doing the lyrics uh, i play the bass i'm a big hand in the songwriting with uh, brandon gear uh, we write like all the material together and then uh, we rehearse it uh, as a band with Anthony Valmora on drums. Uh, so I play a pretty heavy role in the band. I also manage a lot of our operations. Okay. And uh, so how many kind of iterations of working with other musicians do you think it kind of took you to find Sunset Drip? You, you did mention that you kind of got into it very early, but I imagine there were some trial and error there before you found a good uh, group of people to work with. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was a lot of trials um, and a lot of errors. Uh, but yeah, I was lucky enough that when I started my first band, when I was 16 or joined rather, because I replaced their at the time singer, uh, I was lucky enough that that project lasted eight years. And it really taught me the perseverance of kind of just sticking to your guns and seeing how far you can take it. Um, all in the while, like while that was happening, I was joining other projects and some session stuff and going to sing in other bands as a guest. Um, but like all the bands that I've been in that I've committed myself to, uh, I think we're really based off the idea of perseverance and, uh, seeing how far that we can take it as a group and learning how to work as a team, because I think that's one of the hardest things about being in a band, especially one that's going to, it's aiming at being around for a long time is you got to really learn to become a family, go through the good and the bad and, uh, you know, get back to practice and understand what's important as a unit. Sure. Absolutely. You're definitely not wrong on that one. It can be very difficult to keep t people together for, you know, a committed project. A hundred percent. It's probably the, one of the hardest aspects about uh, being in a band, including like putting up with, you know people's personalities and flaws and what are people good at how do you hello you still there i'm so sorry i i muted the microphone by accident that was <laughs> that's okay what, what was the last thing i said um here I'll, I'll just i'll just re i'll just reiterate what i said i said basically that the hardest part i think in the band is dealing with people's you know uh flaws and what they're good at and seeing what uh people are able to you know be, what position they should be put in and how they work in the band in order to have a very effective process to the whole thing and create a sense of community to it because it has to be fun it's a lot of work but it has to be fun absolutely so you kind of mentioned that you've been doing sunset drip for a while uh have you guys already been putting out albums and doing tours i know right now you said you're at a show that you're getting ready for but uh yeah. what's kind of the background of the project so uh, Sunset Drip has been a very, very active project from the beginning. Uh, we started in 2018. Um, you know, we were putting together our first record by 2019. Our first single came out in October 2019. And then we were going to put the record out uh, in the summer of 2020 when uh, the world came to a halt. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we kind of got hit on pause a little bit there. But we, we continued to meet up. We continued to practice. We refined the album. 
so we have an album that was released uh, June 2021 called Bad Driver, which is our debut. Um, that got like airtime on Montreal's number one rock radio. Uh, we got interviewed on a nationwide broadcast by CBC. Uh, and then Duke Eatman, a big entertainer. And my guy, Grant opened a lot of doors for us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, the whole way through from the beginning, we were always playing gigs every weekend, uh, in Montreal and kind of building the, the, the hype around the, the band, you know, uh, the imagery of the band. And uh, now that the world is coming back and we've developed like exponentially, uh, to say the least, uh, we're playing almost every weekend, but in different cities. So we're pretty much spread all around Quebec and Ontario right now. There's a lot of demand for us in Ontario. We're making a lot of new friends there. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's what we're up to. And tonight we're playing uh, the Pitsy Campus in Montreal. Um, We're going to be doing sound check in about 20, 30 minutes. Excellent. So um, would you kind of say that you're uh, currently in like the promotional tour phase of the album that you released last year? Uh, I actually, we, 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 we did a tour last summer. Okay. Uh, which was after after June 2021. So we, we did the promotional tour for that one. Uh, and I think now we're kind of heading into the next uh, phase of things, which is, you know, now that places are opening up again um, and it's easier and more accessible for people to come out, we're kind of just reestablishing a presence uh, in our hometown and cities with demand for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're in May, we're going to be uh, going to a, a cottage up in the woods and, um, actually inspired a bit by uh the Foo Fighters movie uh Studio 666 and we're bringing a bunch of gear with us up there and we're going to record our second album which is pretty much like done in post uh post uh, pre-production is pretty much done so we're just going to go in there and bang it out Awesome that's uh, uh kind of what I was going to lead into uh you know what are your next projects um you mentioned some pre-production is already done so I imagine you have some concepts and stuff ready for uh what you're going to be working on Yeah absolutely we actually have a m- single called Ivory that's coming out of mastering this week uh we're having a listening party uh on the weekend uh next weekend and um from there we have a six song uh EP LP, a short LP, um, that we're pretty much done writing and we've done all the demos to them. So now it's just about sitting down with it and, uh, producing it on high quality uh, gear. Sure. So, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, the same question twice, but for different, uh, purposes. So, uh, sure. look at, looking forward, what do you see for sunset drip? Where would you like to see that in five, 10 years? Um, to be very honest, exponential growth is my very brief answer. Um, we're a blood hungry, bloodthirsty band right now. Very hungry. Uh, we're trying to get in on, uh, get in on a lot of festivals uh, in Canada right now. And we're amping up so that next year we can get down to the U S. So the next five years, in my opinion, is exponential growth, meeting a lot of new people, putting out, uh, probably another two to three records. Definitely maybe even more um music videos the whole the whole whole nine yards we're we're going we're going for it you know we're going for gold awesome and then uh the same question but for you personally as a musician for me personally as a musician i'd say my um my aspiration is to kind of just push the project forward and to grow uh as a human being along with it learn uh a lot with the process of how it grows uh, and expands, become a better musician. It's already been, uh, you know, night and day since I started. Cause I, I only started playing bass when I joined sunset trip. So mm-hmm. that's five years ago. And from then to now, it's like playing every day really changes it, you know? So mm-hmm. another five years, uh, I definitely see a big gear upgrade. Um, we already have a lot of great gear, but I mean, you can never have enough. I'm sure any musician listening <laughs> understands that. For sure. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, so just exponential growth, man. I want to I want to be everywhere with the band, hopefully traveling and uh, seeing the world and and bringing joy to people. Bringing joy to people after two long years of 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 rough times for a lot of people, you know. Isolation is tough for for many. Sure, definitely. Uh very cool. So, um why don't you share a couple memories of really important things that happened to you surrounding music, whether it was, you know, an impactful show that you went to or, you know, recording the first album with Sunset Drip. What are some memories that really stand out and keep you motivated? 
I mean, I'd say a lot of the memories related to being present at festivals, uh, you know, being backstage and playing the show and seeing all the people that are so down to down to just vibe with your music has been a, a big motivational push, um, you know, bringing it back around to when I was like 16 years old and going to these festivals because I didn't have a creative out, out, outlet at the time. I wasn't into music so much. I, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just some young punk with a mohawk looking for <laughs> looking for trouble, you know. Mm-hmm. So to be able to be on the other side of that and to maybe give that to some other young person and to inspire them to be greater than their demons and to push through their darkness and make something great of it, that's that to me is everything. Excellent. Uh, so where can people check out your stuff and find you on social media? Yeah, so number one, you can go to our website. It has everything you need there. It's sunsetdrip.io. Uh, it's updated weekly. All our shows are there. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at the Sunset Drip, Facebook, same thing. And uh, yeah, we're always we're getting more and more into the Instagram and posting, but the website is like the place to be because we're always updating it, and we're actually in the process of creating an online fan club right now. So if you're interested in following along and interacting with other fans. That would be the place to find us. Awesome. So I always like to give the person I'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last word. So just a message that you feel resonates with you that you want to throw out there. Am I allowed to curse on this uh, this show? (laughs) Yes, you are. All right. Perfect. Then what I'd like to say is stay true to yourself. Stay true to your love for your dreams, your passions, and remember to rock and fucking roll.